Hi, we're engineers that work in the oil and gas industry. There are many types of engineering disciplines needed to find, develop, produce, transport, and process oil and gas. There is a need for mechanical engineers, chemical engineers, electrical engineers, and civil engineers. However, some universities offer degrees in petroleum engineering specifically. A petroleum engineering degree covers many oil and gas engineering topics, including reservoir characteristics and management, drilling, well completions, production processing, transportation, and more. Petroleum engineers also study basic mechanical, chemical, and electrical engineering, plus geology, physics, and economics. I'm a petroleum engineer that works with reservoirs, so people refer to me as a reservoir engineer. If you don't know, a reservoir is an underground area that contains oil and gas in the rock pores. Reservoir engineers help determine how much oil and gas is in a reservoir, how much can be recovered, and how quickly it can be produced. We also determine what types of wells should be drilled, how many are needed, and where they should be located. We work with reservoir models that are built using seismic data, well logs, production history, and other information. These models allow us to perform simulations that help us determine how to manage a reservoir. There are many options involved in reservoir management, so we perform economic evaluations of options to help our company make the best decisions. Finally, we prepare periodic estimates of remaining recoverable reserves. These estimates are relied upon both inside our company and by outside investors, so it's important that we get them right. My job is to design and oversee the drilling of wells, so I'm called a drilling engineer. Drilling can be extremely complicated. We have to drill holes that are often more than two miles deep and have to hit a target with tight accuracy. We have to safely drill through formations that could cause problems, and sometimes these wells are drilled from floating rigs in water that's a mile or more deep. We're told where the well should start, where it should finish, how wide the hole needs to be at the bottom and what kind of geological conditions we should expect to encounter along the way. The rest is mostly up to us. We'll drill the well in several sections and we'll periodically line the hole with steel pipe called casing to protect both the well and the environment. We determine how many hole sections and casing strings are needed and how wide each section needs to be to achieve the required hole width and depth at the bottom. We determine what kind of equipment and procedures should be used for each section, including drilling tools, bit types, casing, cement, and drilling fluid that we call mud. We stay informed of all the applicable government regulations and make sure that we stay in compliance. A wide variety of supplies and services are needed to drill a well, and we work with the supplier management group to get a rig and all the needed supplies and services to the drilling site at the right time. We can't afford to have a lot of servicemen standing around waiting for their portion of the job to begin, so we have to coordinate activities on a tight schedule. During drilling, we post a company man at the well site and review daily drilling reports to make sure the well is done safely, properly, and at a reasonable cost. Drilling engineers interact with other disciplines to ensure that financial, technical, and safety objectives are clearly discussed and achieved in all phases of the drilling process. My job is to complete a drilled well to get it ready for production, so I'm called a completion engineer. Completion engineers determine where we should make perforations in the casing to establish contact with the reservoir. We design any stimulation programs that are needed to increase production, such as acidizing or rock fracturing, also called fracking. And by the way, fracking some wells costs more than drilling, so it's very important that we get that right. We determine what kind of tubing and downhole equipment should go into the well to channel production back to the surface. We also configure the Christmas tree, which is a valve assembly on top of the well that controls well flow and well access. If the well needs artificial lift to get fluid to the surface, such as a pump jack, we also select that equipment. My job is to design and oversee the installation of production processing facilities, and I'm called a facilities engineer. Facilities engineers design the flow line layout to collect and combine production from multiple wells, and we design the process and select the equipment to separate and treat oil, gas, and water. We also design control systems, utilities, storage tanks, meters, test facilities, pipeline connections, water disposal facilities, and potentially much more depending on the needs of the project. 
The challenges multiply for developments offshore because we need to work with engineering and construction firms to design subsea equipment, platforms, and top sites that can handle all of the working needs. Last but not least, my job is to monitor ongoing production and field operations. I'm usually called a production engineer or operations engineer. I analyze well performance and production flow and look for ways to improve production and reduce costs. I identify needs for modification and repairs to wells and facilities, and I help make sure that equipment is safe and well maintained. I interact with other engineers to get things done. We don't want our results to be just good, we want them to be excellent and optimal, and that's why they need a coordinator like me. If you work in the oil and gas industry, you should take a course from Energy Training Resources. Their one day course will show you how your role fits into the industry and will provide information that will help you interact better with other functions. Longer courses are also available that cover broader areas and go into more detail. So long. <laughs>